Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and get started. This class is going to be different than the other ones that I've done. Uh, this one's going to be considerably less in or considerably less formal. Uh, I am the plan for this is I'm going to leave about a 18 inch to a two foot or so belt favor um, when we'll get into how we're going to do that and I'm pretty much going to walk through just my process on this something real easy uh, so people can get a, an idea of the basics of weaving and then from there um, if you guys have any questions along the way stop me and I will do my best to answer these questions um, but the reason I'm doing a belt favor and not a anything else, a full belt or anything like that. Uh, belt favors, I could probably get this project done in a half hour, maybe 45 minutes. And so that is the, uh, the goal. And so we will work on that probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes, get through that. Once you figure out how to do the belt favor part of it though, you'll be able to make a whole belt. Um, we're gonna do the end knot, we're gonna do attaching the cord to the ring. Uh, we're gonna do all of that today. So essentially I'm just gonna do 18 inches of it then if you want to make a full belt, you do it for seven feet. And it's you you pretty much get the idea. Um, what's up, Dusty? Good to see you, man. So essentially, today I'm going to be making a belt favor in my personal colors, um, which are white and black. And so what you're going to need for any of this, if you're uh, going to be making a belt, belt favor is a ring of some sort. Uh, these are two and a half inch nickel plated steel rings. Uh, I use these for all of my belts, unless they're like special order or higher end belts. Um, you can get a pack of 50 of these for like, I don't know, 60 bucks on Etsy. Um, you want the nickel plated ones because those don't rust. If you just go to like your tractor supply or anything like that, they have rings which are helpful, um, but those will rust eventually because they're not nickel plated. Um, these ones don't rust. They're incredibly strong and tough. Um, so you'll need a ring of some sort, two inches at the minimum, three to three and a half inches at the at the maximum there. Um, you'll need scissors, and you will need a lighter. And then for my materials for this, I've got white and black macrame, and then I've got some black and white that we'll use here um, as a offset color. So this is the larger of the macrame cord. I want to say it's six millimeter. It comes in like two, four, and six. Um, two is like really, really tiny. Um, the four is okay if you if you want to weave, but you'll need a lot of it. This is the this stuff is the pretty standard uh, macrame for most weaving. You can get this at Hobby Lobby. It is nine bucks if I remember correctly for three hundred feet of it. Um, I order most of mine online so that way I can get the colors that I want because Hobby Lobby, at least my local one, only has a, a few at a time. They have, you know, maybe black or maybe yellow, but not all of the stuff that I need. So Amazon, unfortunately, doesn't have a prime that I've been able to find to get macrame. Um, it takes just as long as if you order it from Peppermill, the website or the company who makes this stuff. So I just order it from Peppermill's website, get exactly what I need shipped here in about a week or so. Um, so we've got our three colors and we've got our ring. Um, what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to get three colors of, or three strands of black and three strands of white. Now, generally for every foot of the length of the belt that you want, uh, you're going to need a yard of, of material. And then you're also going to add an additional yard for your end knot. So you want to make a six foot belt. Each of these strands that we're going to pull off to connect to the belt needs to be, if you want a six foot belt, needs to be seven yards long. Uh, for this, I'm gonna make these two yards long. Um, you can see my ultra scientific measure, just arm length. There's one, there's two. I'm gonna come in here, snip them. Um, and then I always just go through and knot them just so that way they don't fray. You can kind of see, hopefully, this is one from a long time ago and it starts to fray. So if you don't, um, if you don't, not those it'll continue to drop down your your cord and not look very good um thank you very much uh for that it is pepper mill braiding company appreciate that thank you um so now one of the things that a lot of people struggle with on how to even start these right you have your ring you have your cord 
you're gonna place it over and through your ring and then you're gonna come through I don't know if you can see that or not and pull the cords through your loop this is called a hitch knot and you can YouTube that if you need something a little bit more detailed than that um, I'll do you'll see I'll put the other ones on here pretty quick but I now have you know about a yard of fabric or fabric a yard of cord there Gonna go ahead and grab another one for black. One, two, Generally when I'm weaving like this, um, I will just have Netflix pulled up, I'll be watching a movie or something like that. Uh, can't do that though on these videos because copyright stuff or I'll have music going on in the background. Um, so a lot of this video, you guys are just gonna have to be looking at me as I work, so I apologize for that. But we'll go ahead and do this again. So I've got my ring here. I'm gonna take the middle, this is the middle point of your cords. You're gonna place it through the loop and then pull the other two strings through and then pull it tight. There we go, so we've got two black so far. Need one more. One, two. All right, so now I'm done with black. We can throw that to the side. Gonna add the black here. Now, a little tip for you. All of these rings, I don't know if you can see it right there, have a weld point in them most of the time. Um, so what I do is I will always just take these cords here and like make sure that that weld point is covered up. Um, just so that way you don't see it. It's a little aesthetic thing that some people don't notice, but I notice and so I always do it all the time. Um, now we're gonna grab our white and do the same thing. I'm gonna do two yards on each strand of the white. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alternate the white and black here. Um, and you'll see why in a second. But so I'm gonna just take a white one here in between the black, kind of separate it out and the white one's gonna go right there. Let's see. Just made it in. Where do you get the solid ring from? So the uh, I order all of my rings mainly off of Etsy. Um, I use nickel plated steel rings, um, so that way they don't rust. Um, you can use rings from Tractor Supply if you want to. Um, they, that's what I started on. Um, the downside with those is if they get wet, they will rust. And then especially if you're making a night's belt or something, that rust will bleed through the cord eventually. Um, so I use two and a half inch nickel plated steel rings and I get those from Etsy um, and then I just that's that's what I use on most of mine um, what else we got I don't know if you answered this before I got here but is there a best size ring for the woven belts so generally I look for two and a half inch rings um, I feel like anything smaller than that is difficult to get the width of belt that I want um, you can go smaller I wouldn't really go smaller though than two inches some of the uh, fancier rings that you'll get from like Tandy Leather or if you order some online, um, a lot of my rings that I use for Knight's belts are um, like horse saddle rings. Um, those generally come in three inches. Those work pretty well. Um, just know that it you need to put a little bit more cordage on there or it will like it'll look awkward if you have this big old ring and then a real thin belt coming off of it. So just something to to keep in mind. Um, but you can use all sorts of things. I've used um, a horseshoe as a ring before on one of my favorite belts. I've used actual belt buckles and made some thinner paracord belts, like like real, you know, like cowboy belt buckle type stuff. Um, you can use almost anything for a ring. So this one here, two and a half inch nickel plated steel ring is what we're using today. You can get these for about a buck 25 a piece on Etsy. So I've got white and black alternating. Now I'm gonna take 
my black and white mixed here. I'm gonna put one on either edge here and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. One, two. Now this stuff, you probably won't find it in a normal Hobby Lobby. Um, when you get into the non-solid color stuff, it gets a little difficult to find at your local store. You will probably need to order those. Um, but they do come in all sorts of different colors, right? If you're your fighting company colors, they probably have a mix for them, which is kind of neat to come in and accent this stuff. Um, how do I want to do this? I'll be all right. Oh, I forgot something real quick. Hold on. I'm going to post a link here in this chat. When you get a second, make sure that you come in and you fill this link out. Uh, go to the form there. When you do that, it will give you credit for being here. Uh, we are giving all of our ANS classes are receiving sign-ins uh, for participating here. Uh, so make sure at some point during this video, you go and fill that out. Um, so that way you get your, your sign-in for being here and participating. All right, so now what I have are my cords on there like this. I might add another white and black in a minute. We'll see, but we're gonna start with this. Okay, so now let me see if I can get the camera where I want it. Okay, should be able to see it there. So. Generally what I do to start this is I put my ring on my toe. Um, you don't have to do that. I just do because it's a little bit easier for me. Um, and then I will leave and then eventually it'll get long enough to where you just kind of wrap this around your leg and, uh, and keep going and it, it works pretty well. Um, so what I'm gonna do, what we're gonna be weaving today is a standard horizontal weave. So what that means is as we weave, your pattern is going to go in horizontal patterns. Uh, there is a vertical weave where your patterns will go up and down, um, but that is not what we're doing today. Today we're doing the horizontal pattern. Um, where do you get your mixed colors like that? So um, I get my mixed colors like that from Peppermill Braiding Company, who is the person who makes all of these uh, cords. Um, if you scroll up in the chat a little bit, it was uh, linked graciously for us up there for earlier in the chat. Um, and they take a little bit to mail stuff out, but you can get almost any colors that you want there. And so that is uh, where I get most of my uh, cord from. Let's see. Okay. So what you're going to do, the, this is probably, this is the, the essential part of weaving. What you're going to do, you're always going to take this far left strand and you are going to be weaving it in and out through all of the other strands. So what you're gonna do, the first one, I don't know if you can see that or not, is gonna go underneath your first cord. And then it's gonna go over the top of the second, underneath of the third, and so forth, all the way through, okay? That is the, the basics of pretty much every weave that you do, no matter how complicated it gets from here, this is the base of all of that. You need to get this part down um, before you really do anything else. Now, I'm gonna do something fancy real quick. This is probably a little bit more than the, than the basic, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here on my black and my whites, and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do this with them and it'll make a pattern here in a minute that you that you can see that I'll show you But instead of just doing like black black white white what that would do would make a, a diagonal pattern um, I am going to Do this and then weave it and it will I'll show you the pattern that it makes here in a second So as I go on this first time, I'm gonna go under this first one over the black one then I'm gonna pull a white one over, go under that, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. All right, 
So now, if I did this correctly, we're gonna look at this. All of my white strands should be on one side and all of my black strands should be on the other. And it looks like that's what we have so far. Put it back down here, what we got? Uh, how do you do this if you don't have monkey feet? Um, I've seen some other people do it a few different ways. Um, some people will get a hook and put it on the wall and then just put that on the wall and get like a rolly chair and work backwards away from the wall. I've seen some people um, do it with, like they put it in the drawer of their dresser and then put some weight on it and then use that. Um, you should be able to do this though. I mean, all I'm, all I'm doing is I just have it set over my big toe. So like I'm not doing anything super fancy with it. All right, so now what you're gonna do, this is the strand that we just wove through. You're gonna set that off to the side and it's just gonna hang there and we'll do, we'll do something with that here in a little bit. Let me see if I can get a better angle there for you guys. All right, so now you're gonna take the one over here on the far left and we're gonna essentially do the same thing again. So now we're gonna go under the black one, over the white one, under the black one, over the white one. And we're gonna do that all the way across. And then once you get to the end, you're gonna pull it all the way through. Now remember, if you're making a belt with this, this cord is gonna be like, I don't know, five yards long or something. So it'll take you a little bit to be able to get it all the way through. But then you have the cord from your first one that you wove, the cord from the second one that you wove, and you're gonna pull it all tight. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna put your thumb in the middle and you're gonna separate. You can see all my black ones are on top and all the bottom ones are on the bottom. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take them and you're gonna pull them as tight as you can. You probably just, I don't know if you heard my elbow just pop, but that, that will happen sometimes too. And what you're doing there is you are getting rid of all of the slack that is in there. Um, you ha If you don't do that, um, you'll get tension issues as you weave your belt, right? So you'll need to do that every single time that we go. Um, hey Madison, good to see ya. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, we've got your two strands here from the ones that you've woven. You're gonna take the top one and you're gonna put it right back in to your weaving again. And then you're gonna tighten it up and just start and keep going down the line. And you're always gonna tighten it every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start working on this. Um, I'll kind of explain stuff as we go here, but if you have any questions about what we're doing so far, let me know um, so that way I can, I can kind of clarify a little bit. So just to kind of do this step again, you can see here I've got the black and white one, which is the one that I wove the first time through, and the black one, which I just wove this time. So I'm gonna tighten those a little bit, and then I'm gonna take my thumb, and I'm gonna separate all of the cords out. Let's see if you can see that on the screen here. Give it a second, it's a little delayed. Yeah, you can, okay, cool. And then you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna separate up and down and you're gonna pull them as tight as you can so that way it gets all the slack out. Then we're gonna come back in here. I always pull on the last one that you wove through. Tighten, tighten. You're gonna take this one and put it back in. Tighten, good to go. Let's see what we got here. Uh, what is the name of this weave? So this is a standard horizontal weave. Um, I just changed up. I did some fancy stuff up here. Essentially, this is a candy cane weave with um, an edge on it, which is just a little a little different. But essentially, every weave that you have is going to fall, for the most part, into two different patterns. You're gonna have a vertical weave, which you can kind of already see it starting here. The pattern will go vertical, or sorry, will go horizontal. It will make a like a diagonal as it goes down, which is what we're doing today. Then the other one is is the vertical weave, which the pattern will stay consistent 
all the way down. And so pretty much every weave that you do is going to be one of those two weaves. I imagine this is a slightly more difficult when they're all the same color. It's actually not too bad um, when they're all the same color. A, a, a big, a, a large amount of the uh, belts that I do are one color because squire belts are very popular, page belts, stuff like that. Um, it's not that much more difficult. You'll be able to tell um, when, if you skip, um, like if you skip one of the, the things, it will, you'll be able to tell because it won't look uniform it will stand out to you when you when you're doing it if you make a mistake i'll see if i can purposely do one here in, in on the next one all right so let's say i skipped one like i can't even keep weaving it if i skipped one um hold on Okay, so if I made a mistake, which I purposely did here, you see how that one right there is just kind of out of place with all the other ones, right? So even if these were the same color, it would, like, you would still notice it if you do something wrong. Um, the multicolored helps a little bit, but it's not terrible. It's not that much more difficult than, than one color. So... I don't know if you saw, I just pulled that back out and I'm going to reweave it correctly here. Like I said, um, I posted a link a little bit further up on the page. Make sure you guys fill that out to get your sign-in credit. If you have any questions about what I'm doing here, um, please feel free to ask. Uh, do all friendship bracelet weaving patterns work with rope? Um, they do. But the, the friendship bracelets are kind of a different category. So if earlier I said weaving, um, all the fundamentals of weaving are all the same, friendship bracelets technically aren't weaving, they are knotting. And so when you knot something, like if I'm gonna do a friendship bracelet, it's not weaving all the way through, you're actually making little knots along the way like kind of what I just did there. I don't know if you could see that or not. Um, let me just do another one. So when you do a friendship bracelet pattern, you are essentially making little knots instead of weaving, you're knotting. And so yes, every friendship bracelet can be done in macrame or paracord. Um, it is just, it's a little bit different than, than weaving. I personally don't like it as much. Um, I think it makes really cool stuff. Like if you saw my flame belt one where I put the flame like actually in the belt, like spelled it out, you can do some cool stuff with it. I just don't like it because it takes about 10 times longer to do knots than it does to weave. But some of the coolest belts out there are done that way. So it just kind of depends on what your, on what your tastes are. So now, we're getting kind of into the boring part where I'm just gonna have to weave for a little bit till we get to the end knot, which is the next exciting part. So if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing here or just about belts in general, feel free to send them my way as I keep working. Uh, why use paracord instead of macrame? What's the difference? That is a great question. So a couple of reasons. Macro so some of the differences we'll start with. Macrame is a little bit thicker of a material um, it also is a little bit rougher of a material. So personally, I don't like working with macrame as much because it hurts my fingers. Like it hurts my fingers more than paracord does. It uh, like it's a little coarser. And so it, it just, it hurts a little bit for me when I'm trying to do a bunch of belts before an event or something like that. Um, paracord also has some of the survivability stuff. So I've heard stories of people using their paracord belts from LARPing to like tow their vehicle out of a ditch type of stuff. You probably wouldn't be able to do that with macrame. Paracord is definitely um, a tougher material. But the main reasons I actually prefer paracord 
And the main reasons for that, one, it is a little bit more expensive than macrame. And so it's got kind of this, I don't know, prestigious, like it's the higher end material because it is more expensive. Uh, macrame comes out roughly to about like three cents a foot when you're on this stuff. Paracord, if you buy it in bulk like I do, comes up to about five cents per foot. Um, paracord, if you're just buying it from Hobby Lobby, comes up to like 19 cents a foot. So paracord is more expensive and so it's kind of a premium option. I also just personally like the colors of paracord considerably more. Like this one's white and black and it looks pretty cool. I like it, but like compare it to, I don't know if you guys can see. I just, I think the colors are much crisper on paracord. Um, and so you combine the preference and colors for me. It doesn't hurt my fingers as much and it's more expensive. And so it's a premium good. That's why I, I wear paracord. I like working with paracord. Um, check in, supplies. Josh, I've taken paracord bracelets apart on the trail and used shoelaces. Yeah, par paracord has that survivability thing in it as well. I mean, you're talking an average belt has, I don't know, 250 to 300 feet of material. And so paracord, what, you know, what can you do with 300 feet of paracord compared to what you can do with 300 feet of macrame. That's an extreme situation, so it's not probably gonna happen, but some people just like that as well. The main thing for me is I like the colors of it. I think it makes crisper designs than what macrame does. So generally, let me talk price here. If you are making a full macrame belt you're probably going to be in the range of 10 to 12 dollars in materials depending on your ring um, if you're going to make a paracord belt depending on where you buy your paracord for me it's about 15 bucks because i order mine in bulk but if you're going to buy it just from the hobby store like hobby lobby or joann's or whatever you're probably looking at like 25 dollars to make a paracord belt compared to $10 to make a macrame. Um, so keep that in mind. Macrame is significantly, I mean, it's half as much money as paracord. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, let me show you what, what we've got so far. So it's this right here, how it goes, it's called a candy cane weave. And then I've just got a solid stripe that's gonna cut through the middle of it. And so we're probably halfway done with the weaving and then we'll get to the end knot, which is my favorite part. I, end knots are what are the most fun for me to make. Let's see. First ANS entry I ever did was a macrame belt. Loved it ever since. That's cool, Dusty. It, it's a lot of people's first entries um, because it's fairly cheap. Like it's, as far as Amgard crafts go, it's, it's, one that everybody can get into, and it's something that everybody can do. Um, there's not a, like, the higher end stuff is really difficult, but your basic wearable belt, any new player can sit down and make a wearable belt in four or five hours, which is really neat because you can just sit down at a park day one day or an ANS night, bring, you know, $50 worth of macrame and make 10 belts for people or have people make 10 belts and then they can wear, and it's a functional belt, and it's awesome. Like, it's it's a really fun craft that anybody can pick up. Plus, paracord has the seven strands. Let me... Yes, that is correct, Josh. Paracord is a tougher material. The main, the main thing with paracord versus macrame, some people prefer the feel of macrame over paracord, and vice versa and you have the color difference and you have the cost difference. Those are the, the main differences between them. All right, so now we are back. I have done one full rotation here. So I started with this black and white over here and now we are back to it. So one rotation is probably, I don't know, eight inches maybe, something like that. 
on the belt here. And so you can tell if your weave is good. Uh, this is standing up vertical right now at, you know, eight inches, 10 inches, something like that. Um, if your belt is not very tight, it'll, you know, so this is something I always like, you know, a little game. How, how good am I weaving by, can I get this two foot long to stand up? Kind of fun. What else we got going here? What award category are belts? I've seen a lot of arguments about dragons versus garbers. Is there an official ruling? All right, Matt. I, uh, you hit one of my soapbox or one of my, uh, yeah, one of my soapbox issues. So the official answer for this is it depends on your kingdom. So each kingdom is able to award how they wish. Um, the technical answer is it can be all three. It can be Garber, it can be Owl, it can be Dragon. Um, I have received kingdom, like higher level awards for belts in all three. Now, the arguments for those, um, if technically the rule book says belts are owls, that is what the, the award standardization says. The, what a lot of people argue, though, is that when it says belts, it means leather belts, which is fair, right? So if personally for me, I wish that they were owls. I think that that, because that is what the rule book says, and until it is changed, that is what we should be awarding them as. The second thing that I think we should give them for, if we're not going to give owls, should be garbers. And why should we? Well, this is technically a garb accessory. So when people make hats, when people make pouches, when people make other things in this line, um, we give them garbers. Now, that would be really difficult, I think, because if you're ever trying to get a master hood out of these, um, you would be competing against tunics, which I think would be incredibly, incredibly difficult. Um, and then lastly, you have dragons, which is where the Kingdom of the Rising Winds, my kingdom, falls currently. That is the precedent uh, that we have set. And the reason for that is because we don't think that they are garbers because there's not sewing involved, which is fair. Um, we don't think that they're owls because we think that the rule book is talking about leather belts when it says owls. And so we kind of just throw it into the dragon category, which is the everything else category. So um, that really just depends on your kingdom. Ask if you um, ask your regent, like your kingdom regent, and they'll be able to tell you. Um, but it, it varies widely and it is very frustrating to me that it varies widely. So ask your regent, they'll tell, they'll be able to tell you what it is. All right. Insert. What colors are reserved for belts? That is a great question as well. So technically, the only colors that are officially reserved are white and red. Now, white belts, anything more than a third of white uh, is considered a knight's belt. And if you are not a knight, you're not allowed to wear anything more than a third white. Squire is 50% red. So they give a little bit more room there. So say you're like, you're a Saracen, your fighting company's colors are black and red. You can do a black and red belt, excuse me, and be okay. Um, those are technically the only ones in the rule book. Um, your kingdom may have some other things in their corpora. Most kingdoms, black, uh, solid black with silver trimmed is man-at-arms, and solid yellow is page. But those technically aren't officially reserved. Only knight's belts and squire's belts are. If that makes sense. Um, most of the time, though, as long as you're not putting a bunch of white in your belt, no one really cares that much. Um, if you want a, a big red belt that has some accent, like most people aren't going to care too terribly much. Uh, rules of play shows white for knights, red for squires, green and black for silver, man at arms, yet yellow for page. Also correct. But remember, it's only specific percentage. Yes. So if I remember correctly, it's a third. Anything more than 30% white is a knight's belt, and anything more 50% 
red is a squire's belt. I think, if I remember off the top of my head, is the official. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, so would the belt you're making be reserved for knights? Technically, hmm. So first off, we're making a belt favor, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but if this one probably would be considered a knight's belt by the rules, um, I wouldn't be upset if I saw somebody wearing this because for me, it's very clearly not a white belt or not a, a knight's belt. Technically, it would be a knight's belt. Um, would I throw a fit if I saw someone wearing it? No, just because... I don't know. If I saw someone wearing this, right, this is the majority white and they're not a knight, I could see people getting upset about. People probably could get upset about this one, but eh, I wouldn't, but that's just me. Technically by the rule books, yes, this would be a knight's belt. <laughs> All right, so we are going to now move in to my favorite part, which is the end knot. Let me let the camera adjust here and I'll show you. So essentially I've got, I don't know, a foot, 14 inches, something like that on the belt. And so now we're going to finish the belt off with an end knot. Why you need to do the end knot. Um, if you don't, it will, so like if we just took all these right here, and just, I don't know, somehow like knotted it to end it, right? You could do that if you wanted to. Um, I just don't think it looks very good. And so what I do to end all of my belts, I'm gonna take this guy here that I was just weaving with and I'm just gonna kind of throw it. Mm, yeah, we'll use it, we'll use it. Nah, no, we're not, we're gonna do solid white. So I just kind of decide what I want to do color-wise here and I'm gonna do what's called a Solomon bar. Now, if you're familiar with any like bracelet paracord stuff, this is pretty common. This is what pretty much every, like this is the baseline for most survival bracelets. You're gonna take one cord and you're gonna kind of make a triangle here off to the left, okay? You're gonna take this other cord here on the right and you're gonna place it over this cord it's gonna go under the entire belt and through the loop that you created, okay? And then you're gonna tighten it. And what this does is this keeps all of your belt together and you're gonna tighten it as much as you can. And this keeps all of your belt from coming unwoven as time goes on. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing now, except we're gonna do it on the other side, right? So last time the loop was on the left, this time it's gonna be on the right. So we're gonna have our loop, we're gonna put it over the top of the belt. It's gonna go, this other one's gonna go over that cord, underneath the entire belt, and through the loop on the other side. And then you're gonna pull it tight, and now you have a completed solid Solomon's bar. Let's see if you can see that. Now we're gonna do a few of those to kind of cap this off and then we'll see how much cord we have left if we wanna do something fancier. What we got here. Um, if I didn't know left from right. What do you mean, Sam? All right, so what I have done now is I have, scoot this up, quite a few of these little guys down here in the end. And what that will do is that will keep the entire belt from becoming loose as time goes on. Um, you really, really need to cap it somehow. It doesn't have to be exactly this way, but do your best. You have to cap it somehow, or as you go, go further and further down, your belt will become looser and looser. I love what we got here. I think this would make a cool favor for a wreath. 
I know the grid and the sash color, but the black and white strips. Yeah, I, this would be really cool. These, these colors here are my like personal colors. Black and white are my heraldry colors. Um, and so I'm making this, I'll, I, have a, I just picked up a new page. And so I'm gonna give this to him if he wants to throw it on his belt so he can wear colors um, if he wants to. But also a good example for this here. Um, in, uh, I need my hands. Oh, gotcha. All right, so now, let's see, we got, depending on how much cord you have here at the end is how fancy you can get at this point. Um, we have enough, I'll be able to do it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now, which end knot we wanna do. You guys who know my end knots, which one do you think we should put on this? I don't have a whole lot of cord, I can do a little bit of something, but you guys who know end knots, which one do you wanna see? We'll, uh, we'll see if we can, we can make it. There's, I don't know, 15 or 20 of these that you can pick from. So there's a lot of, a lot of different ones uh, that you can do and they can all get kind of fancy towards the end, which is really what my favorite part because you can make just a simple plain belt really pop if you do a cool end knot for it. Any votes for any of them? If not, probably just gonna do a spiral. Let's see. All right, so what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna take two of our black strands here because I made the end cap in white. So I'm just gonna take the other color uh, so that way it pops a little bit. And we're gonna pull all of the other ones down tight, except for our two black ones here, okay? So then, what we're gonna do, we are essentially gonna do just half of a Solomon bar. Earlier, we did one on the left, and then you're gonna take the other one and do it on the right side, and you go back and forth, and that's how you get a complete Solomon bar. Uh, what we're gonna do this time, though, is we're only gonna do them on the right side. And what this will do is it will create a, Hold on. It will create a spiral effect as it goes down. Um, I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Okay. So then again, I'm just going on. Actually, you know what? We're going to do this with the black and white. I think that would look cooler. So scratch that. Instead of doing black, we're going to pull off these black and white ones and do it that way. I think that would be cooler. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Um, have to step out. Uh, yes, Dusty, it will be. If you go onto the Rising Winds virtual classroom page, it will be there. Uh, make sure you fill out that form, though. Get your credit for being here. Appreciate you being here, man. So I'm going to take this. Gonna go over the top. We're gonna take this guy. It's gonna go over that cord, underneath the whole belt, and through the loop. Tighten it up. And we're gonna do the same thing again. Previously on the white ones, we would go to the other side and do that. But for this belt, or to, for this part, we're not. We're just all doing it on the same side over and over again. I'm just gonna push it up a little bit. We'll do a couple more here and I'll show you the effect of it. Okay, so if you can see it's slowly starting to curl around. And I don't have a whole lot of string left here, but if I did, say I had another yard or two, you could actually get this to go all the way around multiple times. Um, and so, but I don't have as, as enough string to do that. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and finish this off. Now I'm just gonna go back to white, put another couple of these guys on there, 
called Solomon's Bars. Cobra Knots, I guess, is another name for them. Finish this up here, pull that down, pull this guy down. All right, so now, here in the end, if this belt were to unweave now, right, it would have to go through all of these little knots down here that we just made for the belt to actually come loose up here, which is why we do that and why we do this last step that I'm about to do. Uh, this last little bit is incredibly important and it is one that a lot of people don't do. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all your cords and you're gonna split them in half, right? Just flop them on either side here. Um, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then you're gonna take the two that you were just weaving with and you're just gonna do a basic knot and then do it again, right? So now, on the underside of your end knot, you have a knot holding it in place. Then, you have all of these little guys, and then you have the actual weave itself. So for this to come undone, it would be, it would take a lot for that to actually come undone here. All right, let me check the comments. Do you know why it's called the Solomon Bar? Uh, I have no idea. I've just seen YouTubers call it the Solomon Bar, like when I was learning. Um, it was a Solomon's Bar or a Cobra Knot are the two names that I just saw a lot of people using. And so that's just what I, what I have called it. Um, so then what we're going to do now, we have all these extras. We're just going to take our scissors. We're going to pick a spot. If you want really long danglies, you can go further up here. If you don't want very many, you can go here. I'm gonna go a little bit high. And now, here are all my little leftover scrappy guys. And then that is your belt favor. Now what you, what you wanna do, I don't have my lighter on me, but you'll come in and you'll burn each one of these little end guys here for like four seconds and then take a pair of pliers and just pinch them together. And what that does is it melts all of those fibers together. And so that way those will never come undone either. Uh, if you're doing this with paracord, it's a little different. Um, do I have paracord? Hold on. All right, so if you're doing it with paracord, paracord has these little like inner strands here so what you're gonna wanna do when you go to melt paracord ends, if you just melt this right here how it is, those will eventually poke through. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a hold of the, the innards, right? Pull them out a little bit. You will then snip those and then pull it like here. And then now, you would just melt that part. And so the innards actually end up like down here somewhere. Um, they don't poke all the way out and that, that's pretty important there. Um, I guess now that I grab this, if you really, really wanna do serious stuff, um, paracord, if you buy like 100 feet of paracord at Hobby Lobby, it's gonna cost you, I don't know, like I wanna say it's like 20 cents or 19 cents a foot. Um, if you go in and buy it in bulk like this, you can get it for five cents a foot, um, considerably cheaper, but each one of these rolls is $50. So kind of, you'll get, I don't know, four or five belts out of this. So, and that's if they're solid color belts. Um, I've got, let's see, I've got silver. Anyway, I've got like eight or 10 of these in here. Um, and so if you're going to be doing this a lot, buy your paracord in bulk. It will save you a ton of money uh, down the road. Um, may I have to show you an alternate method for burning so you don't have to use pliers? Cool, yeah. Let me know, man. Um, I know some people for the ends do like real fancy knots and stuff. 
So then you like pretzel knots or whatever, and they, they end up looking really cool. And you can do that too if you want, just as long as these aren't left like this. Because if you leave them like this, as time goes on, they will fray and it just looks bad. So here is the belt favor that we made. Uh, we are 50 minutes into this class. And so in 50 minutes, you can make a little belt favor. So now let me undo this here, show you what it looks like when you put it on a belt. I guess I can show you just to put the belt off. Don't fall over, mannequin. So if you have more room with your cords or you plan better than what I did, right? You can do, this is called a crown knot. This is one of my favorite ones. You can get really, really fancy with your end knots, which is um, where I have the most fun. So let me put this back on the mannequin. Now, let me grab this real quick. If you see my messy office, don't mind that too much. Let me flip you around. All right. So now, you could wear that as a belt flag, belt favor, if you wanted to. Um, and these can be used for, like, what I'm doing here with personal heraldry colors. Um, this could be Fighting Company. This could be Park Colors. Um, up in Lock Haven, they did a bunch for their um, the Grand Duchy Colors. This could be for Household Colors. It could be for pretty much anything. And because it's got this ring here, it can just slide and is fairly comfortable. Um, you can put it wherever you want it to go. So... Um, if you guys have any questions for me, that's about all I have. Um, so I'll stay on here for just a, a couple of more minutes. Um, appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here. It means a lot that you'd come and sit through an hour of me rambling. Um, for doing that, make sure you fill out that link there to get your sign-in credit. Um, so that way you can get participation for being here. Um, Crystal, thanks. There are a lot, of, a lot of people that I've seen do these different flags uh, for different things. Um, if you really wanted to, if you wanted to make an event special, spend, you know, 100 bucks or something, 200 bucks, and you can make a ton of these uh, as, as gate favors. You could do, like, or winners of a tournament, maybe. I've seen uh, a lot of people in other games, like DAG, for instance, they do, uh, they hand out belt favors for the winners of their tournaments. So, right, if you win single short, you get the single short flag to wear for the next six months or whatever. Um, so you could very easily do those at your park with these. Um, let's see, what else could you... Um, there's, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do with these um, just to denote different things. So, um, Jake, you're, you're welcome, bud. Thanks for tuning in and asking questions. Uh, hope, hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions on anything weaving, um, I do have a YouTube channel. It's Godric Gray uh, or Dragon Masters. If you look it up on there... I have probably 50 videos um, about different weaving stuff, different patterns, more in-depth, better angles <laughs> where I'm not live um, that, I, that goes over a lot of this stuff. Uh, Nate Frederick is my name here on, on, in, on Facebook. Feel free, send me messages. Um, we do have a, a, a Facebook group called the Weavers Guild for LARPing. Um, we post stuff all the time on there. It's a great community where people say, hey, I'm having, I need help with this, or hey, what do you think about this? Uh, check those out as well. There's a bunch of resources online for how to get better at this craft in particular. Um, so appreciate you guys. Um, feel free to send me messages if you have any questions. Uh, my name's Godric Gray. Appreciate you guys for being here.